Welcome to this tutorial on how human phenotype ontology terms or HBO terms are used in genomics. In this tutorial, we will cover what we mean by HBO terms, why they are important in clinical practice, particularly when thinking about requesting genomic testing, and how to access and use the HPO terms database to find the most relevant terms for your clinical case. You may have previously heard the term HPO, which stands for Human Phenotype Ontology. As a quick recap, phenotype describes the observable physical and biochemical characteristics that are directly influenced by a person's genotype and the environment. Ontology is a term used in computer and information science to describe a framework of agreed, standardised terms. The HPO database is a collection of agreed terms used to describe phenotypic features. It was first published in 2008 to unify the various terms used by clinicians to describe phenotypes and is freely accessible online. It has been adopted across the world and has grown to more than 13,000 terms. The terms are organised into five sub-ontologies. Those are mode of inheritance, clinical modifier, clinical course, frequency, and finally, phenotypic abnormality. Phenotypic abnormality is the largest sub-ontology and is what we will focus on today. Each HPO term has a unique ID and label, which we will explore in a bit more detail later. So why is using consistent HPO terms important for patient care? Use of HPO terms ensures that we are all speaking the same language when describing a patient's phenotype, which avoids confusion and miscommunication. This aids in the selection of appropriate genomic tests and the clinical interpretation of any variants identified. It's also an official requirement when ordering whole genome sequencing tests. HPO terms provide clinicians with a shared language to describe phenotype. Let's look at an example. This image shows a patient seen in clinic with an abnormality of their toes. Without guidance, it's inevitable that different clinicians will use different descriptions of this clinical feature. A few examples are shown here. But the HPO database has guidance for this clinical scenario, suggesting the use of the description 2-3 toe syndactyly. Using this guidance encourages precision and ensures that all clinicians are speaking the same language when it comes to phenotype. While we're looking at this example, let's break down the way in which HPO terms are presented. The term itself, 2-3 toe syndactyly, is the common language agreed for this phenotype. The identifier is a unique number that relates to this specific term. All of these start with HP and are followed by a number. All terms in the database also have a description to help you select the right one. The terms are arranged in a hierarchy with broader terms known as parent terms, such as abnormality of the limbs at one end and more specific subterms known as child terms, such as 2-3 tosyndactyly at the other. A child term can have multiple parent terms. For example, you can see here that post axial hand polydactyly nestles under both abnormal skeletal morphology and abnormal digit morphology. This system provides flexibility that a simple hierarchical system would not allow. The example here is of a hierarchical system or tree structure of HPO terms for a patient with features suggestive of smith lemley opitz syndrome. Another reason for using HPO terms is that phenotypic information is used by scientists and technicians in the laboratory to determine whether the correct test has been selected. Phenotypic information combined with genomic data and information about the family history also informs interpretation of results. In genomic testing, even one small gene panel can highlight thousands of genomic variants for analysis and the phenotypic information that has been provided by the clinician is one of those crucial pieces of information used to analyse those variants. Consistency of language avoids miscommunication and ensures that all patients and families benefit from the most applicable testing and are given the most accurate results. Here are some examples of vague terms used to describe a phenotype that are much less likely to result in an actionable report for a patient when combined with genomic data. In contrast, when specific HPO terms are used and combined with genomic data, we stand a much higher chance of identifying any genomic cause of disease. 
when requesting a test undertaken by whole genome sequencing, you will be expected to complete a section on the patient's phenotype using HPO terms. So let's take a look at the HPO website. This is the page that you will see first. You'll notice that there's a search bar in the centre of the page. Let's put 2,3-tosyndactyly into this search box. This will take us to the entry for the HPO term. On the left hand side you can see the hierarchy. You can see that this is the most specific term that you can select but you can navigate back to widen your net. In the table here you can see all the diseases associated with this phenotype and also all the genes associated with this phenotype. These can also be exported and filtered. So let's filter the diseases to look for smith lemley opitz or SLO. Here you can access information from other databases, namely OMIM and Orphanet. So we've selected the Orphanet link. Here is further information about SLO. So there's all the HPO terms that are associated with this condition and how frequently they occur. Now let's try looking at a case. You see a patient in clinic who's been diagnosed with a follicular thyroid carcinoma at the age of 33 years. On examination, you note that their head circumference is greater than the 99th centile and they have multiple lesions on their face in keeping with trichelomomas. You are concerned about a potential diagnosis of P10 hamartoma syndrome and wish to undertake genomic testing. When completing the request form, you are required to provide the HPO terms to describe the patient's phenotype. Let's start with our first piece of clinical information, thyroid carcinoma. You can see the HPO term and identifier here at the top, but left on the hierarchy, you can see more specific terms that you could select. In this instance, we know that this patient had a follicular thyroid carcinoma, so let's select that and we can record the term and identifier on our request form. Now let's do the same for macrocephaly. When I search, I can see on the left that there are multiple terms that I could select to provide a more specific phenotype on the form. There are a couple of overlapping terms here, but nothing fits perfectly. So in this instance, I'm just going to stick with a slightly broader term, macrocephaly, and I will add that to the form. Lastly, let's have a look at trichelomomas. When I enter this into the search bar, I can see that there are a couple of options. It's quite typical to see a choice between single and multiple. So let's go with multiple and pop that on our request form. We can see from the table that this is associated with P10 hamartoma syndrome. Let's have a look through and check that we've recorded all our terms in accordance with the HPO website. And there we go. There are all our HPO terms inputted into the test order form. Looks good. Now we've run through everything, here's a case for you to consider yourself. You see a two-year-old patient in clinic. Their birth weight was above the 90th centile. They have a big tongue and a port wine stain on their forehead. You also notice unusually folded earlobes. After this tutorial, feel free to explore the HPO website for yourself. What HPO terms would you select based on this information? Could this information help you with making a diagnosis? So in summary, HPO stands for Human Phenotype Ontology. HPO terms are standardised phenotypic terms and they are stored in an accessible online database. It is vitally important to use HPO terms as a shared language to ensure the most accurate test is selected and to aid interpretation of variants. Terms are arranged in a hierarchy and it's important to select the most specific term. And finally, the HPO website is freely available online for you to explore.